Hi everybody, it's Sam from Oval Renewables and welcome to another project that we've completed just on the outskirts of York slash Malton in a place called Howsham. This one's a really interesting one. We've got a 3.68 kilowatt solar edge system with Viridian in roof panels. We've then got a three phase Sonnen battery. There is a heat pump on this job. We haven't installed that, but there's a heat pump on this job. And the customer also has a 10 kilowatt three phase solar PV system that was installed back in the, the good old days of the feed-in tariff. So I'm going to take you through this system and show you how we've installed it, how it all integrates together, and hopefully you enjoy it. So let's have a look at the panels on this roof. We've got three here on this elevation. So these are 320 watt Viridian in-roof solar panels. So you can see they're finished pretty much at the same height as the tiles. We've then got four on this west elevation. Then we've got some others on the other south elevation, which I'll show you. But that's one of the key things with Solar Edge and why we like it so much is that if you haven't got just a big south facing roof or a, an east west facing roof, if you've got loads of little roofs that are different pitches, slightly different orientations. On a standard string inverter, ideally, you would need a tracker or MPPT on each elevation, because what happens is if you have panels on this orientation, this elevation, and then panels on this elevation, if they're on the same string, then when one set of panels are slightly shaded um, and not exposed to the same level of light as the other set that are on the same roof, sorry, then they start to try and charge each other and it all becomes a bit of a mess. With Solar Edge, you can have panels on different orientations, different pitches and, and everything. They all work to their own efficiency. Um, so that's one of the key things. And that's how we've got away with putting panels on different elevations on this project. So these, like I mentioned, are in-roof panels. We've got the optimizers in the loft area. So instead of putting them underneath the panels and having to the stress of if something goes wrong, because stuff does go wrong with a piece of equipment, instead of putting them under the panel and having to set a scaffold up to then get take the panel off to change the optimizer or to change the panel or whatever, we can actually just go into the loft of this property, check the optimizer is working okay, and also test that the panel's working okay without having to set any scaffolding up just simply by taking our step ladders inside, getting to the loft and testing it inside there. So that's one of the key things that, that we've done and that we do with every single in-roof system if we can. Now, obviously it depends if there is a loft, but we, we like to do that. So that's our in-roof system here. I'll show you the other panels. So here we are at the other roof. You can see behind me there, we've got five of the 320 watt Viridian in-roof panels, same as the other ones around the other side. These are also on a, a south-ish facing roof. So like I mentioned, that's all fine because of the solar edge optimizers that we've used. So in total, we've got 12 of these 320 watt panels, which is 3.84 kilowatts of, of solar PV installed in total. We can oversize this to 155%. So we could put a load more panels on, on this inverter. I think actually they've even just increased that to 200%, uh, which, is, which is great. So we can put 200% more panels on the oversizing, which is, which is crazy. So we've got inside, which we'll go and have a look at in a minute, we've got a Solar Edge 3.68 kilowatt inverter. So that is supplying this property with energy, but this property is actually fed from the three phase meter that is in the Great Barn. So that's the main property here. That means that the original solar that's installed and this solar are both feeding into both the original property and this new property. So it's a bit of a different one, this one. And uh, we'll have a little look at how all that goes together. But yeah, that's the solar and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Here is the solar edge inverter. So we're in a little uh, sort of outdoor store area, like almost like a lead, little lean-to building to the main house. So we've got the single phase 3.68 kilowatt inverter. So all those optimizers that go onto the back of each panel they connect to this to give the information, the panel by panel information to this inverter. This inverter is connected online, so all that information can be fed onto the app, which we'll have a look at in a bit. But to show you the main components of this system, we've got our DC isolator over here. So our DC cables come down from the panels. It's all one string, 
come down from the roof into this DC isolator. Out of this DC isolator, we come around and into our inverter. So that is the input side. That's our power coming from the panels, which is uh, obviously the most important thing. Out of that, we've then got our AC cable, which goes through the isolator, through a generation meter, and then into the house consumer unit. So the electrician that we worked with on this project, they installed us the internet cable and the main supply cable to the inverter, which has made everything work nice and easy. We were able to work with them, not slow them down in their uh, wiring of this, this property. So, so yeah, we work with a lot of electricians in that way. What we've got here, we've got a visual indicator of what's happening with the system. So we've got a blue LED to show that the system is online. So if you have an internet problem, that blue LED would drop off. We've got a solid green light to show that the system is generating. It doesn't show us how much it's generating. That's all done through the app and the online dashboard, but it just shows that it is generating. If the system's starting up, or there's maybe not enough light for it to fully gener start generating, you may see that green light flashing. But uh, in normal operation on a day like today, you'd see that light solid green. We've then got the ability to have a third LED, which is a red light, which we don't want to see. <laughs> that means that there's a problem and that there's a fault with the system. It may be something or nothing. It might be that the lost grid, there may have been a power cut, uh, or you turn the supply off or something like that. Uh, so it doesn't have to always be like a fatal error. It could just be something that's very simply simply fixed. We then got our document holder. So in this document holder, we've got our start stop procedure to shut down this inverter um, properly. And also there's another one of those next to the main consumer unit so that uh, each, anyone that comes in, because they might, might not be us all the time, the electrician might come in to uh, do some work in the consumer unit and need to know how to turn this system off because obviously this is a second supply to this house now. So they, they need to be aware of how to turn this off so that they don't get a shock when they turn the main switch off and go into that consumer unit because this has the potential to still be live. In reality, it's probably not, it's probably shut down, but we have to put that there because it's, it needs to be isolated anyway, just in the off, on the off chance that it, it is still live in that board. There's another one of these uh, AC isolators next to the board as well, so that the electrician has got local isolation for this system uh, to make sure they don't have to always come out here because electricians, we're lazy <laughs> and we don't always want to come to work on something in the board. So if it's got local isolation, it's nice and easy for us to uh, to, to isolate. You can see there's not a lot to this system um, with regards to components, which is means there's less to go wrong. So we've got on a, we've got everything mounted on a nice heat proof and fireproof uh, tile backer board, which is like a concrete cementous board. So there's no chance of, of it being affected by heat or anything like that, which it also allows us to clip everything nice and neat. And everything's labeled up and is generating. So this is this building system, as well as it feeding any power that this building can't use back into the, the barn itself, where the other property is. So yeah, really impressed with how this system is working and how it looks and I hope you are too. Okay, so we've had a look at the equipment, the physical equipment installed here. Let's have a look at the app and the monitoring that you get with this system because that is one of the best things about SolarEdge. I'm gonna show you now the iPhone app, but you can get this on Android, you can get it on your tablet, your, you know, your iPad or your Android tablet. You can get it on your desktop as well, on your laptop or your you know, physical desktop. You can get it anywhere. So all this information is available on whatever device you've got. So let's dive into it. We have got, in the top left, we have got the amount of the kilowatt peak. So we've got 3.84 kilowatt peak of generation on this property. That is basically the 320 watt panels that we fitted times the number of them, which is 12. So 3.84 kilowatt peak. We've then got on the top right, we've got the temperature here. It's absolutely freezing, one degree here. So that'll show you what the uh, weather's like in, in the area of where this solar PV system is installed. We then move down, we've got current power. So this, this property is currently generating 318.89 watts of energy. So not loads, but it's generating something in what is a fairly dull day. We then move down again. We've got today, this month and lifetime. So that's the amount of watt hours or kilowatt hours that this system has produced today, this month and uh, in its lifetime. So we've got 788 watt hours today, 80.18 kilowatt hours this month, and 842 kilowatt hours in its entire lifetime. So it's a fairly new system, but it's, it's doing really well. We've then moved down here and we've got power by day. So we've got day tabs. So this is today, we've got at half seven, roughly this system started to generate. 
and we're here at about half past 11 now and it's peaked up at sort of 600 and, and something. So there's a little bit of a lag sometimes on this, giving the latest information, but uh, it plots out a really nice curve as to how the, the day's panned out with its generation. We can then move through week, month, year, and billing cycles to see how it's generated in those different areas. Then move down, comparative energy. So here we can compare month by month, a quarter by quarter or year by year. You'll be able to have a look next year at how much was generated in January um, in 2022 as opposed to 2023, 2024. And you can see how the system's been generating in each month. So you can compare, oh, last January was a lot better than this January. So it's just a bit of information really. You can see there right at the end, November, December, that is uh, when we fitted this system or when we commissioned it. So uh, when we get to uh, November, December, 2022, the customer can compare how the system generated compared to, to last year. Um, so that's that's really cool. We then got CO2 emissions saved and uh, equivalent tree, trees planted compared to the amount of generation. So then if we move on to the actual panel by panel monitoring, that's the next screen. So this is the panel by panel monitoring page. So we're, we're currently on the daily tab. We can see what each panel has generated today. So if we zoom in, we can see these three panels here. This panel has generated 81.25 watts and watt hours today. Um, that one next to it 79, next one, the one next to it 75. So it, you can start to compare what each panel has generated. So you can see they're all in their banks. They're all fairly similar which is good. But if we had one that was massively lower, then we can go, oh, why is that one not generated hardly anything when the one next to it or either side of it is generating quite a lot? That's really crucial for us to be able to pinpoint where a problem is in the future. Because it might be the difference between us putting another full scaffold around this property to find a problem, which you might have to do on a string inverter because we can actually pinpoint where a problem is more likely to be. And also, what that problem might be. So it might be that when we investigate this panel that's, that isn't working very well, we might be able to see that, oh, there's there's no voltage going into that optimizer. So more than likely, there's an issue with the, with the panel itself. And obviously we can then come to site and test in the loft because of how we wired this to actually verify that before the customer goes to any expense getting any sort of uh, scaffolding up. So that's really cool. We can change it from daily to uh, weekly, monthly, yearly, so we can compare how the system has been generating in those different timed areas. So if we look at uh, a daily time, we think something's wrong, and but then we look at the weekly and it all seems to be working okay, then we can go, well, what's changed? Has anything changed? Have they had any work done? What's the condition of the panels? We can kind of then narrow down when we think this problem has started. On the desktop version, we can actually create a graph to monitor whatever you want, the current, the voltage, the power, all different things and compare them to the neighboring panel. So we can, we can really drill down into the information which you can only do with Solar Edge. So that's why we, we try and fit Solar Edge on, on every single job. But that's the app. There's not a huge much more to it. It doesn't bombard you with loads of information. It just gives you what you need to know on the system. If we fitted a Modbus on this, which is uh, an energy, a little energy monitoring device, then it would also show us our home's consumption, our home's uh, import, export, all the rest of it, so that the customer could then see how much of the energy that they're generating, they're using. But we haven't done on this because we've got a battery system installed that does all of that anyway. So that's the app, and uh, we think it's, it's a fantastic app and well worth the little bit extra to spend on the solar edge system just to get this level of monitoring. So let's talk about paperwork. None of us like doing it, but before I crack on, let's get a cup of tea. Because we all know what it's like. We don't want to do any paperwork if we can help it. But with solar, there is specific paperwork that needs to be done. So we've got a G98 application and a G99 application. There are different versions of that, but I'm not gonna get too bogged down in that for this little video. The G98 application is a retrospective notification. So if we're fitting a 3.68 kilowatt or below inverter to a property, regardless of how many panels, it doesn't matter about the panels, it's the inverter that's the important part, then we can fit the system and retrospectively notify the local DNO. So for us here around York, it's, it's Northern Power Grid, but it depends where you are in the country as to who you have to notify. That's a nice, quick, easy process. We can roll up and fit the system and retrospectively notify the DNO that we've installed it. That's great, that's nice and easy. Now, G99, that's a bit of a different kettle of fish really. 
There's two versions of G99, there's Fast Track and then there's the longer application. So Fast Track, you'll get a decision in around 10 days. With the full G99, you're looking more at sort of 45, 55 days before you get a, before you get a decision as to whether or not the network has to go through some sort of change to allow you to have that system in. So if you're fitting solar and a battery, you're gonna have to go through the G99 application. It might be a fast track version, which is great. And if you do a hybrid system where it's just one 3.68 inverter, then you can get away with a G98. But let's not get too bogged down. It's very specific to the equipment that you're installing. Let's take the example that you're fitting a 3.68 kilowatt solar PV inverter, uh, or there's one already installed at the property, and you want to fit a 3.68 kilowatt a battery inverter. Regardless of how many kilowatt hours of storage you've got, it's the inverters that we are concerned about. If we've got a 3.68 kilowatt inverter and a 3.68 kilowatt battery inverter, then we can go through the fast track application. If they're unbalanced, where we've got maybe a, a two kilowatt solar PV inverter and a four kilowatt battery inverter, then we have to go through the full G99 application. Yeah, annoying, another cup. What we can do is we can try and design a system to make sure that you don't have to go through the full G99 application. Or we can put you a certain size system in, get the G99 application, the fast track version, and then look at expanding it to G99 full version later on. It's a bit of a pain, but it's something we've got to do. The full G99 application is around about a 15 page document, whereas the fast track G99 is, is one or two pages. So there's a different level there. But for this property that we're filming on at the minute, we've got a 10 kilowatt three phase system. We've installed 15 kilowatt three phase battery and a 3.68 kilowatt single phase system. So we had to go through the full G99 application, which is a pain. <laughs> but we got it through. As long as you stick with it, you will get to, to an end result. If you submit the application and there's something wrong with the network that, that won't allow that level of generation on site, then they will come back to you with recommendations. That might be, we need to upgrade a transformer. It's gonna cost you 20 grand. That is obviously a cost then that has to be factored into the total cost of the, of the job. So go through that process, start that process as quickly as possible. But for companies like myself, we, we take on as much of that pain and that stress rather than passing that over to, to you as a customer if you're a customer watching this. So it's good to get that process started as soon as possible to, to start ticking down that 45 days. If it's 10 days uh, or it's the G98, it's not necessarily a problem. But if you're looking for a larger system, then you have to go through this full G99 and get that process started as soon as possible. If you've got any other questions about the DNO process, drop us a message and we're more than happy to help out. So that's it for this, this part. This is the first part of two videos. So join us for part two, where we have a look at the existing solar slash battery storage system that we installed. But I hope you enjoyed this little part of the video uh, and learned a bit more about the solar edge system and the Viridian in roof system as well. So join us for part two, where we go into all of that good stuff as ever. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the rest of it, and join us for the next part. Thanks very much.